Perhaps no cuisine among the plains could be more otherworldly than that of the Asimar, the far-flung descendants of Celestials. But even Asimar are half-human, and their need for mortal sustenance is why many believe the bread recipe common in the Twin Paradises is ultimately Asimar in origin. This spiced bread, served in thick slices, is made from grains imbued with grated carrots and rich chunks of almond. It makes a delicious day starter for the hardy shepherds who work in the pastoral valleys of Bytopia. Bold adventurers, take note. If you ever find yourself in possession of the rare herb known as shift spice, sprinkle a liberal pinch into the batter to ensure that each loaf yields a totally unexpected flavor. That is the description for Bytopian Shepherd's Bread from Hero's Feast, the D&D cookbook, written by Kyle Newman, John Peterson, and Michael Whitworth, and released in 2020. Within its pages are some 80 dishes by Adam Reed, both food and drink, from a variety of cuisines of the various races found in Dungeons & Dragons. Now, this is, obviously, not the type of video I typically make, and if I had to bet, I would say that this will probably go down as the weirdest video that I ever create. For anyone that may have stumbled across this one on their own, hi! <laughs> I'm Fandrax, and I'm usually a dude that makes videos about a whole bunch of video games, many of which are D&D related. While you will see me make the Bytopian Shepherd's Bread in question very shortly, this is not, in any way, shape, or form, a cooking channel. The real purpose of this video is to act as something of a year-end wrap-up for the thousand or so people that I'm lucky enough to have follow me. But, if you are strictly interested in the recipe and the book, I've left timestamps in the description for those areas. On the flip side, for those here just for the wrap-up, you'll find that below as well. The Bytopian Shepherd's Bread is your typical yeastless baked loaf, similar to something such as beer or banana bread. This, really, is the one type of baking that I can stomach, because it doesn't require any specific technique, and basically amounts to throwing a bunch of stuff in a bowl and sticking it in the oven. I guess there's really nothing left to do except jump into this and embarrass myself. Also, you'll have to forgive the shadows and general graininess in the footage. My kitchen certainly wasn't set up for this. Starting with the dry ingredients, you'll want to combine two cups of all-purpose flour, two teaspoons of baking powder, and a half a teaspoon of baking soda, with two teaspoons of ground ginger, a teaspoon of cinnamon, and half a teaspoon of ground nutmeg. Now, I'll be honest, normally I would eyeball these ingredients, but in light of the fact that I'm already making a few substitutions, I figured it best if I didn't. If you're new to cooking, Follow these measurements to a T until you discover what you like. Too much of any of these spices, and you'll find yourself with a loaf of bread that tastes like spicy medicine. I had added about a teaspoon of salt to that mixture as well. As I just mentioned, I'm making a few substitutions to the recipe, the first being swapping currants for standard raisins. Currants are a type of raisin, being a dried grape, and more than likely the currants that you'll find at your local grocery store, usually referred to as Zante currants, are effectively normal raisins anyway. Real currants are pretty difficult to find in the States, especially dried. This is a half cup of raisins. With all that mixed together, the raisins are added to the dry ingredients because the flour will actually stop them from sinking into the batter somewhat. A similar trick can be used for chocolate chips or other goodies in dishes such as brownies, by the way. We'll set the bowl aside so we can work on the wet ingredients. To a bowl, add three eggs with three-fourths a cup of tightly packed light brown sugar. Whisk those together, and once combined, add in a fourth of a cup, about half a stick of melted and cooled butter, and a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Then get back to whisking. Here's where I'm making a pretty big substitution. I'm swapping a third of a cup of buttermilk, which I basically never have, for some plain yogurt thinned with regular milk. I took about a fourth cup of yogurt and added enough milk until it was pretty close to the consistency of buttermilk. Yogurt, like buttermilk, is cultured, and I'm hoping that it will lend a slightly chewier, denser quality to the bread. After that, you'll add in a pound of shredded carrots. This was about three good-sized carrots, all in all. With the carrots added, it's time to combine our wet and dry mixtures. Here, you're not really mixing so much as you're folding together. Just go until there's no unmixed dry ingredient visible. 
transfer that into a buttered, oiled, or parchment paper lined loaf pan, and the, the book tops the batter with this really neat looking pattern of sliced almonds. That's great, and I love almonds as much as the next guy, but for me, there's nothing like chopped walnuts on top of baked bread. Whatever nut you choose, just make sure it's raw and or uncooked. If it's already been roasted, it'll burn in the oven well before the loaf is done baking. Press them into the batter slightly and get that puppy in a 350 degree oven for 50 minutes to an hour. I am an unabashed nerd when it comes to cookbooks. I sincerely enjoy reading them, not just pulling recipes. Hero's Feast actually comes with quite a bit of material to it. Between the well-done photography by Ray Cacciatorian, the book begins with something of an introduction and a miniature crash course for anyone that might be more inexperienced in the kitchen. That many who might find this book interesting, tabletop gamers, might not be that well versed in the kitchen was an aspect that was clearly taken into consideration. Any D&D fan will be able to appreciate these short histories of the game's most well-known worlds, but I really love these summations of some of these specific establishments, like the Yawning Portal, which is seen in Neverwinter Nights' as Horde of the Underdark expansion, as well as a few other titles. They even have individual menus for each one that pop up as you make your way through the pages. This menu for the Celestial Vista might be the nicest goddamn menu I've ever seen, and it isn't even real. The cuisines themselves are categorized by the races. You've got humans, elves, dwarves, halflings, and uncommon. Each section comes with a breakdown of what food means to the lives and cultures of those races. Those attitudes are pretty well reflected in the recipes themselves. The recipes in the Dwarven section are as robust as you would expect, while most of the Elven cuisine is typically a much lighter fare. This book really does have just about everything. From hearty feasts to desserts, chances are you'll find something that'll satisfy your cravings, whether it be sunrise or sundown. What I think I appreciate most about this book is that it lets the reader dive in wherever their experience lets them. If you've hardly held a knife before, you'll likely want to start with recipes such as the drow mushroom steaks, portobello mushroom tops grilled in a pan, or the orc bacon, basically candied bacon, which are almost impossible to screw up. If you know your way around the kitchen, whether from the start or because you've worked your way through some of the easier stuff, you can partake in more complex recipes like this Barovian scotch pudding or this ham roast that would have been perfect for Thanksgiving. All in all, I would say that Hero's Feast is definitely more than some sort of gag gift. There are some legitimately solid recipes in here, and having made a few of them myself, I can attest that they're quite tasty. Now, on to the real purpose of this video. I cannot thank all 1,000 and change of you enough. When I first started posting these Musings of an Idiot videos, it was more of a challenge to see if I could get anyone to watch them. And in all honesty, I was pretty satisfied after the first Temple of Elemental Evil video. I only made the Guild Wars 2 video because I had remembered that I said I would, but I was, in all likelihood, going to be done after that. Then, you know, that video got a bunch of views and stuff, and I figured it would be pretty dumb to stop there. As for 2023, I would say expect more of the same, with a few changes. First off, in regards to content, there's still going to be a lot of RPGs, and I'm sure that there will be a good amount of D&D, but I'm definitely going to branch out beyond D&D. There are way too many good RPGs worth talking about outside of the D&D space. Alongside RPGs, I'm also going to start doing some videos about games from other genres. About half of the time of the effective three-week production window for each video is spent actually playing the game and gathering footage. By taking a look at indie titles and smaller games in general, I can reduce that production window by a lot. You saw that recently with the Demon Stone and Alterium Shift videos. It only took 10 days to release the latter after the former. For now, I'll keep some of the games I have in mind to myself, but I'll show some footage here from games for videos that have already been completed or are in production. I've been a busy bee with some of the free time that I hope everyone has had the opportunity to enjoy this holiday season. I do hope that anyone that might be here specifically for D&D and RPG content will give the videos about some of the other genres a chance. I even had an idea for a book review. I have no idea how I would do it or what sort of footage I would show for it, but it's on the table. Also, I'm looking to rebrand. We all love Rasad, and he is certainly an A-tier profile picture, but I think it's time to have something that's a bit more unique. So if you were an artist yourself, or if you have one you follow that you would like to recommend, please feel free. I am more than willing to pay, though I would prefer that it didn't force me to file for bankruptcy. Not that I'm asking for any sort of special discount or anything, but you, you get what I'm saying. 
More than anything, I want to hear from you all who watch these videos. Even if I don't reply to everyone, I do read every single comment and oftentimes take down suggestions for both games to discuss and ways to improve these videos, so please don't hesitate to comment. I love the dialogue that we're fortunate enough to have. I would set some goals for the New Year's, but frankly, I hate setting arbitrary bars from which you force yourself to measure your success, so how about we all just agree to have a damn good time in 2023? The bread is finished, and yeah, I'm not gonna lie, that's pretty damn good. I definitely cut into it too early, make sure you let it cool completely, but that is delicious. You can taste the ginger and spices, but it isn't overpowering. This would go great with a cup of tea, or with some nut butter slathered over it. A hearty thank you to you all once more, you are simply wonderful, and I can't wait to see what we get up to in the new year.